please you just get in with another video. Today I'm going to be taking you through a critique day in art school. So you can see what art school is really like today. Yes, you are seeing that correctly. I did do a full face of makeup, which is not usually in my brand. It's not usually my MO. Trying to get some natural lighting. It's too bright, but look at these shoes. I don't know if you can see them. But if you can, I just got them for Fashion Nova because I had a coupon again and I love them. So for this next part, I was just walking around too much. I was just talking too much. It, the camera was everywhere. It was getting crazy. So I'm just going to quickly explain. Today's class is Sequential Art 1. So I'm doing my critique for sequential art. Sequential art, for those of you who don't know, is art that works in a sequence. Some examples of sequential art include storyboarding, animatics, and the focus of this class being comics. So I'm working for this class on a three-page comic, which I will show you in a minute. Now, back to my clips. Let's kind of quickly explain our project. For the project, we had a script already pre-done by the professor, and the script was very specific with everything we needed to do. It would tell you, like, in this panel, you need to have this happen, and this is the text that you're going to use, and in this panel, this needs to happen, and this is the text you're going to use. Um, so it was very specific, so it was kind of a challenge of, like, how can you put your own spin on this with having everything laid out for you? This is also our first, um, like, big, like, actual comic. We've kind of already done one, but not really. Um, so <laughs> it's, it's also a challenge of, not a challenge, but it's also a, a way of having us work on things like leading the eye and getting different line weights in our panels and having things look good without having to worry about forming a cohesive story because it's already formed for us. I'll show you how I did that when we get to class. Uh, my waffles are done. But anyways, our script was about a dog, an old dog. Um, their owner takes the dog to the beach and the dog gets scared to swim and then the dog gets in the water and is like, oh wait, I'm actually not as old and useless as I thought. I can actually swim. And that's the comic. It's a three page spread, super simple. And it was really fun. So I'll show you guys what I did when we get to school. I mean, first like full project. Oh, so I put yeah. my work up. It's, it's page one, two, three. Everyone else also has their work up. And um, class starts in another five minutes. So I guess we'll start then. I'm pretty much just gonna let you guys listen in on a bit of our critique. We're gonna jump in pretty soon. So I actually need to get up and go look at people's pieces closer up. And then I'm just gonna let you guys hear a little bit of what we do in critique. And we'll come back in and explain kind of what went on. But basically, for critique, the purpose is to talk about what we did well, what we didn't do well. So that next time we attempt to do something, we can do hopefully a better job at doing it than we did this time around. If you're drawing of our character, this one is in full color because this girl, um, Leslie, very good, very talented, also very extra, apparently. And then we have our comic. So I'm going to go down the line and review everybody's work. I'd like to be able to take the work that you, the artist, present in front of us and find a way to make that work. Um, that will work especially well with this comic here because everybody has uh, their own distinct style. So how you draw something may not be how somebody else would draw it. So our goal is to be able to take the work that we have here and mold it into something that would, you know, work for that artist. Does that make sense? Fantastic. So Leslie, take it away. Uh, but once I started to do it, it went by really quickly and only got it done in a day. And even after the things you suggested, like the spotted blacks and fixing the border panels, it, it improved it even more. Uh, um, from, from what I remember, you didn't really um, take to the spotted blacks uh, right away. I think that was something that, you know, you didn't, they had more of a scratchy style or something, right? Yeah. And how do you like the spotted blacks now? I like it. Of scratch? Good. Yeah, it okay. added a lot to it, like you said it would. You got like a big kind of like corner tangent right here of like the dog and her hair. And the reason why I'm pointing all these out is that what that does is that, that that takes us away from the experience for a split second to try to be right, identify, okay, what exactly is in front? And as cartoonists, as, as storytellers, our number one priority <coughs> is to be able to come up with a, um, 
come up with the best storytelling experience for the reader. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so like, what went well, what didn't go well? <laughs> so what didn't go well, I'll start with that, is I felt like once I removed the pencil, like the orange, mm -hmm. I just felt like all of my panels would just be very, very empty and full of white. I tried to fix that by adding more um, black, like I ended up changing her leotard, her swimsuit to be black. I tried, but I still feel like there's just a lot of black. And after like seeing everyone else's, I also think my lines are too thin and things will probably get lost, but I guess we'll see. Um, there's something else I didn't do well. It's not coming to me at the moment, so forget it. Um, <laughs> you, you can still bring it up when that comes yeah. up. So. Um, start the but what I did well, I like that some of my creative ideas, if you will, like page one, panel two, and four, or page two, page three, the first panel with the no, like just not doing things as straightforward as I had originally planned and trying to think outside the box a little bit. Like a little sparklies and like, ooh, that, that was very good. Like, like I can hear that Sailor Moon, like, listening oh, yeah. sound effect of like glitter in the background going on with it. Oh yeah. It reminds yeah can anybody else hear that? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> it reminds me of like the, the 90s like photos. Where you have you and oh. one of your oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I always love whenever people do this, but they have their animal with them, too. Yeah. Yes. There's a picture of the Jonas Brothers that they have parrots, <laughs> and it's good. Sorry, that's peculiar, but um, interesting. It, it reads like a, I don't even know if this is the right reference, French comic. Uh, there's something about it mm. that's... I get what it, you're saying. Like it's, saying, it's like yeah. a little. It's it's like cause it's because of the angles. It's, it's like oh, like this is this is lines. Yeah, like the lines, yeah, like the lines are noir. subjective. Yeah. I was gonna tell you at first that there weren't there uh, that they, I thought they were the perfect line width all across the board, but now that I can see them from over here. I didn't see them. Like if you get up there, I have a bunch of little waves and dots and just random stuff that is not gonna exist when I put it in Photoshop. So yeah, I could have gone thicker. I just love the, like the way you chose to to render everything at each moment reads like the line the line work changed based on the mood. Um, I say right off the right off the bat, I think one of your biggest strengths is lines in general, which I appreciate because like after I started inking a lot more and appreciating inking, uh, lines started becoming one of my favorite parts of the entire process, and I think that you're using it really well with just about every single panel. And I think one of the reasons why it works as well as it does is because of that containment line lesson that you're here for. Uh, because each panel border is the thickest line that you have going on um, on each page, and that kind of contains all the wide variety of lines that you have for like the hair, for the elements, for the backgrounds inside of the scene. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're able to make it work so efficiently. To dovetail what um, Justin was saying, like now when I look at it more and more, he's right. When it starts out, because of like the the angles, especially like you've got a, a Dutch angle right there and stuff, mm -hmm. it gives it like a, almost a sinister feel to it because everything's offset. But then once the dog feels like he's okay and calm, everything normalizes out. So that's it's like so going go from that extreme well angle to more of the slice of like straight true. angles. Yeah, probably. I think it could have thicker lines. It's just because it's it lost amount between the water effects and the dog. I think that from well, to be fair, I'm at it from a distance. So I have, yes. I have a question about that because um mm -hmm. so some things like it's hard to see because we're way back here. Yeah. But you don't read comics from way back here, so does it, I mean, I don't want to say it doesn't matter, because it obviously matters, but, like, it's, I don't. To, like, play into that, my yeah. kind of thought of, I feel like all my lines are too thin and I should thicken up everything. If I thicken up everything, then does that problem still exist when of, like, the splash thin. getting lost? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think, because uh, I'm able to be back here, I'm able to see the, uh, the P-L-A-S-H really well, not the S. I think that the thing, I, I, I would actually only just beef up the lines for the S more than anything, and I think that that would do the trick. Um, still have the tail aim roughly towards where the, uh, mm. where the mouth is going to be, but I don't think, like, I, I think you could just have it taper off rather than go all the way to the edge there. Okay. 
You guys have any other thoughts for her? Thank you. All right. <laughs> great. Awesome job. Thank you. Okay, guys, it is... That was critique. I only um, showed you guys a lot of what had to be said about the first person who went and a lot of what had to be said about mine. We did get into some good conversations towards the end and more of the class started talking other than just like the four of us who were talking in my clips. We did get into some good conversations about the last girl's piece, but you know, I only have so much memory space on this here camera, so we had to um, put some limits on it, but that was critique. I felt pretty good about it. It went pretty well. Let us, let me just get through the rest of my day. I have to do my art history class. I have a meeting. And then we can sit down and have a chat about everything that just happened. Hello and welcome to my car. We are in a whole nother day. We have a whole nother hairstyle. I was going to take these Bantu knots out, but they're not dry. Story of my life. Um, anyways, let's get talking about art school critique. So I'm going to compare general art school critiques to how that critique that you just saw went and give you some ideas of some of the things that you might be able to expect in your own art school critiques if you are planning on going anytime soon. So let's jump in. Art school critique is pretty much what you were told, pretty much what you were afraid of. Like, sorry to break it to you. That's pretty realistic. So the idea is that you go in, you show your art, and your professor and your classmates will tell you what's good about it and what's bad about it. Sometimes your professor does more talking than your classmates. Sometimes certain cl your class just doesn't speak. It all depends on the classroom environment and the teacher's instruction. But that one was, it's a pretty talkative class. Um, I've been in some other classes where critiques are very silent. And I've been in other classes where the professor likes to do the whole critique. And um, it's pretty much just what the professor thinks and whatever you or your classmates think is just irrelevant. So I've been in plenty of different situations. I personally prefer a more open critique where everyone can talk and say their piece. Um, and I've also been in more mean and more nice critiques. So what I mean by that is my art school at this school, the art building, like visual arts building, is split into two floors, the top and the bottom. On the bottom floor is where a lot of the traditional arts take place. So drawing, painting, illustration, um, the 3D arts are down there. A, a lot of the stuff that people typically think when they take art happens downstairs. Upstairs is the are a lot of the newer fields. So um, graphic design occurs upstairs. Animation is upstairs. Sequential, as we saw in this video, is upstairs. Anything that's like... You would have to think about it for a second and, uh, and know a little bit about art to know that that field is an artistic field or to like have that come to your brain when it exists. Things that occur on the computer typically happen upstairs. And the way that the upstairs and the downstairs are split is that upstairs critiques are generally a lot nicer than they are downstairs. People are much more likely to just say everything that they love about your piece and how great it is and how great you are and just be super, super nice about it all. And it's you know, it's bad. It, I don't like it. It's fine when people are nice about your critique. You don't want people to be mean to you, which we'll get into when we go downstairs. It's fine when people are nice, but it's not helpful. The point of critique is to get constructive criticism. And a lot of times upstairs in particular classes, not so much in sequential, like that one's not so bad for an upstairs class, but a lot of times upstairs, they will just be so willing to praise your work that when it's not good, no one says anything and no one's saying anything about the stuff that's not good just means that you don't know that it's not good and you don't know how to make it any better because no one wants to comment on it you know what worked but even what worked sometimes they will lie or exaggerate flatter you to make it seem better than it actually is like maybe it's not working that well but they're just like yeah that was cute you know you did your best a for effort when it's really not that good at all so it's not helpful when your critiques are super nice. It's certainly easier because you can present your pieces without the worry of like, what are people going to think? What are they going to say? You already know they're going to say a bunch of good stuff, but it's just not helpful. It's just a lot of talking into a void. And I personally try not to contribute to that. I try to be the one in class who's like, hey, not the best, not that smooth. You could have done this better. You could have done that better. But when you're one of the only people doing that, it just makes you come off like an asshole. Uh, so I can't, you know, lead it by myself. A lot of times critiques are just too nice. So that's the downfall of when critique is very like fluffy. It's that you never get any better and that you can turn in garbage and still get a good critique out of it. Or you can turn in something that you really want to make better. 
like say you're at a progress critique, like not a completed piece. You really want that critique so that you know what to do better. So when the piece is completed, it's good for both you, for your portfolio, for the final project you're creating, for whatever. You want it to be good for the grade, everything. But critique is just too nice and too fluffy for you to be able to know what you need to do better. So that is one of the things that can happen upstairs. It doesn't really happen as sequential, but it happens a lot upstairs. Downstairs, critiques are more brutal. They will be much more open to telling you if they don't like something, especially professors. Um, and especially downstairs, professors are much more into believing in like following the greats, the great artists of Europe. So if you're drawing anime, it's not going to fly. If you're drawing just like really simplified, cell shading, semi or non-realistic at all, it's not going to fly. You're aiming for renaissance paintings basically is the way it works downstairs um so it can be a little bit hard to have your own style show through sometimes downstairs but it's important to learn the fundamentals so I, that's a whole nother talk which we will be having stay tuned for that video we will be having that talk but that's not the talk for right now right now we're talking about critiques so <laughs> critique downstairs it can feel meaner because people say negative things about your piece but it can also be constructive sometimes it's too much sometimes it's just a lot of hatred towards your piece um the class will focus on something that they don't like about it or a particular issue with it and none of the good parts are highlighted and it might even be that you don't see the issue and when you don't see a problem you're not going to be able to change it you're not going to be able to fix it you're not going to be able to learn from that critique because they might be saying oh the anatomy of that leg looks weird but you look at it and you think it looks fine so how are you going to change that leg or how are you going to draw the next leg differently when you just don't understand the critique but everyone just keeps throwing it at you it just makes Makes you feel bad and feel like you can't draw legs and like you just don't understand what human bodies look like so it can be too much sometimes but generally speaking it's okay you have to go into it thick-skinned you have to have a grain of salt um, sometimes with certain people's comments but you have to be able to expect people to critique your work when you're going into art school doing critiques you have to expect critique it's not always gonna be nice it's not always gonna be pretty and even sometimes it isn't even mean it's just genuine critique but you'll feel like it's mean because it's attacking your creation that you spent 10 or 12 hours on and that that can that can suck it can suck um so it can feel like a lot but it's really not it's beneficial it helps you learn and grow as an artist it helps you realize what you've done wrong so that you can do it better next time if you feel like you're in the kind of class environment where you can kind of like argue with them about it, maybe you're trying to rebut it and be like, I don't really see what you're talking about. What do you mean? I was going for this. If that's not coming across, then what can I do to make that come across? What's your real issue here? You can have that conversation. It doesn't have to be, hey, this is shit and you just have to take it. You know, it, it, it's much more brutal downstairs. Critiques come more so with worry and just what's going to happen. Are people going to like this? It's, it's much more angsty <laughs> downstairs. And at my last art school too, it carried this sense of angst. So if you're in, generally I would say if you're in a visual arts program for a drawing, painting, illustration, something like that, be ready. Be ready. They might be nicer to you in graphic communications or in animation or something, but be ready if you are drawing and painting, my darling, because you're being compared to Michelangelo, and I just, I don't know. I kind of doubt that you are painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling, so it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough, but you can get through it, and it'll make you a better artist. I find that I don't find critique all that difficult because I had a lot of critique in high school. So I've already got four years of critique experience and those were more negative critiques where they weren't afraid to say what was wrong with your piece. And even sometimes in that it's like I would turn in a piece that I thought was really really great and the class or the professor teacher at, at the time of high school didn't think it was really really great and my grade didn't reflect how I felt about the piece and it makes you angry so I've already been through that for four years so when I got to college I didn't really have that problem going through critiques it was genuinely fine getting critique I'm pretty used to it so that is something that you can look forward to if you're nervous about critique know that eventually you will get used to it you will learn how to take it how to take it with a grain of salt how to have thick skin through it and how to learn from it I still had a moment in college where I did get upset after critique but the best thing to do in that situation is to put the piece away <laughs> just put the piece away and go back maybe three or four weeks later when you're you're over the mean comments you're over it go back 
look at it and see if you can't see anything that your classmates were talking about. After a while away from my piece, which I loved very much, I looked back at it and I was able to see, okay, yeah, that does look a little off. That could be better. I see what they were saying. But if you're mad in critique, just grip your teeth, nod your head. And when critique is over, put that piece away and just don't look at it again because you're going to need some time to heal from that one. <laughs> you really will. I think that that is all I have to say about critique. I would say in my sequential class, we are generally pretty nice to each other. It's an upbeat environment, but we're still not afraid to tell each other, hey, you could have done this better, you could have done that better. We're still not afraid to try and help each other improve, which I really like. I don't think the class ever comes across as mean. Even with our critique, I never feel attacked. No one ever feels like, you know, their piece was just run through the mud. Generally, we get a lot of critique as we go from our professor, so it's not like we just work on the whole piece and then we put it up and he's like, oh, I hate everything about it. We're going to talk about it as we go. So generally, by the end, everyone's got something that's, you know, somewhere between decent and really good, and we can just kind of work on moving things up the ladder, but no one's ever going to turn it complete garbage and just get shat on and critique. So that's the way that that class is ordered, just that we have a lot of check-ins before the actual critique. So it allows for critique to be still critique, still critical, but you're never going to get dragged through the mud, basically, unless you just completely deviate and just ruin what you had going. That's just not going to happen because what you're doing has already been approved to some degree. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions about what an art school critique could possibly be like, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to answer them for you. If you are going to art school, let me know. Is it an art middle school, an art high school, art college? Where are you going and what are you going to be studying? How do you guys feel about the critique that I was just in and what else would you like to see from me? Remember, for the month of March, I'm uploading a video every Saturday at 1 p.m. All of these videos will be art related, although they'll also include some other element of YouTube that I like, be it vlogging, talking to my camera, just sitting down, or, um, forgot what the other thing I like is. Yeah, that will all be art related, but also include a little bit of other flair to show some more of my YouTube desires. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing what an art school critique is like. Click some lickety links to see some of the other stuff I have up. And don't be afraid to leave a comment and subscribe. I'm, I'm watching you. If you want to see more of my art, follow me on Instagram at KG Creative. There's a link in the description. And I will see you guys next time. Until then, doodly. You haven't clicked my links yet. I don't know what you're doing. I really don't. I'm just putting on my jacket, getting ready to go to class. It is, it is Monday.